she was born six weeks premature. Sometimes that can be a result of the toxoplasmosis. Whether it was that or something else, we don't really know. The only thing we really knew when she was born is that she had the microcephaly. Um, and what happened after that is, and she was born uh, about six weeks premature. So she was small, she was in the hospital for, I don't remember how many days, she was four pounds and some. And uh, everything seemed to be going reasonably well, but when she was a few months old, I got home from work one day and my wife says, I don't think she can see. So we went through and did a few simple tests to try and see what kind of responses we could get and she didn't seem to be responding. So then we contacted the local, I guess it was the health authorities or whatever, and uh, they went, as part of the evaluation, they took us into a room with no windows, shut the door, turned off all the lights, so it was completely black and she couldn't follow a flashlight in that totally dark room. And uh, it was interesting, they were saying, oh, why don't you just pass her over to the state, let them take care of her. But to us, that was out of the question, no way. And it's been interesting to watch her progression. Um, it took her a long time to get to work, longer to get to where she was crawling and where she was walking. Um, I think she was about four when she finally walked. And we'll get back to that story in a little bit. But it was interesting uh, at first. And some of the other things, because of the impact on the nervous system, the way I kind of like to think of it, you've got multiple circuits coming in. Some of the circuits are good. You're getting good information. Some of the circuits are just noise. And so, she would tend to be tactically defensive, for example. She didn't want to reach out and touch anything. And so what we had needed to do was to provide stimulus so that her brain could go through gradually and figure out, okay, this circuit is good, this circuit is bad, shut it off. And so like my wife, we go through and rub her arms and rub her hands and go through other kinds of things like that to provide the needed inputs so that over time she got to where that completely went away. That wasn't a problem for her anymore. Uh, we had an old doctor who suggested that when we put her down in her crib, we, get, we needed to give her a visual signal that she could use because as we found out later when they took some pictures one time, the fovea, which is where all the detail vision in the eye is, in both of her eyes was total scar tissue. What that means is all her fine vision in both eyes is completely gone. That means she can't lock her vision together and get depth perception, so that was out of the question. The visual acuity in the peripheral vision, people don't always realize this, is not nearly as high as it is if you, with, with your fovea. Your fovea, the sensor density, that's the, where you see all your detailed vision is very high. Once you get outside of that to the, the rest of the retina, the density is much, much lower. And so as a result, she, something like TV's never been any good for her because she doesn't have enough detail capability to be able to make much sense out of a picture. So anyway, um, what they suggested is we have some stimulus. So we took a string of Christmas tree lights that would blink and we put them above her crib and whenever we laid her down in the crib, we would plug in the lights and they would sit there blinking on and off and that gave her something that, again, her brain could go through and figure out what's a good signal, what's noise. And over time, you could see the progression. When we first 
she was born in Maryland, and we were still living in Maryland when my wife recognized that there was a problem. Uh, we went first to the county people, and then later on, the actual diagnosis came about at uh, Johns Hopkins University Hospital, which is also in Maryland. My wife and daughter were there for two or three days. They went through and did a whole battery of tests. They were able to confirm uh, she had the microcephaly. The, one of the ways they check and one of the common symptoms is when they take an x-ray of the brain, they see little spots of calcification all through the brain, and that was there. They could look in her eyes. They could see, and in fact, one of the irises had a hard time even going up and down because of damage to it. So they checked that. It had all the classical symptoms. They checked the antibodies and were able ultimately to get a positive diagnosis of the congenital toxoplasmosis. And then it was interesting because this is a hospital where they train doctors. So they took all the doctors they had in training through to see her because they rarely had a chance to show them someone who had all the classic symptoms of toxoplasma, congenital toxoplasmosis. So anyway, um, before we left Maryland, we had a, a patio door at the back side, and she could find her way to that brightly lit patio door. She could tell it from other things, so she was making progress. Uh, later on, from there we moved to Washington State, and I had a brother who lived across the street, and eventually she got to where she could recognize my wife or his wife from anyone else, but she couldn't tell them apart. But she was making progress. The depth perception was interesting. One day we were walking, and it happened to be a church. They had a sidewalk that went this way and another one that came in at a 90 degree angle. And the brushing that they did on the concrete was in a different direction. She has no depth perception. And I was just letting her go on her own. And she got down and crawled across that interface because she didn't know what to expect. She has since learned when she sees like a typical curb, she's not sure if it's going to go up or if it's going to go down because, again, uh, no depth perception. So she'll be, she's prepared. She's learned certain kinds of things. Oftentimes when she goes through a doorway that may have a stoop and there may be a step and so forth, she tries to be ready for whatever is there. Uh, if we walk her down a handicap wrap, which is nice for her because she's still slower going up or down stairs, we'll tell her no step to let her know that it, she doesn't have to worry about it. Um, she understands far more than she can express. We'll get back to that. Uh, so anyway, uh, over time, she got to where she could do that. Then she could tell the two, my wife and my brother's wife, apart. Um, maybe I ought to talk about walking at this point. She crawled for quite a while, and then she got to where, like a child does, she would cruise around, and she seemed to be ready for it. And so what we did is we had a hallway that was probably 20 feet long. And she always liked to go to my wife. She's been my wife's shadow her whole life. So I would hold her, and all she had to do is take one step to get to my wife. And then I'd take her back, and we did that two or three times. So she took the one step without holding on to something. And then... After she seemed to be doing that confidently, we separated a little more, so now she had to take two steps. And we did that for a little while and then kept adding steps so that by the end of that evening, she was going clear down the hall to my wife. She hasn't stopped walking since. So, and that was, at a, if I remember right, she was four years old, so it was later. But she learned how to do that. Um, she goes through 
and she makes actually pretty good use of her peripheral vision. When she first started out, there'd be, if there was something in the middle of a floor, she could tell, okay, there was something that was a little different colored. And she'd make a great big dodge around it because she didn't know what it was or how big it was. And over time, you could see where she'd need to make smaller and smaller dodges until she'd just step over it. So she's gradually been able to progress on her vision, and she does actually pretty reasonably well with what I would expect she has. And again, it was when we were in Washington that they took the pictures that they showed us, that showed the total um, scar tissue in the fovea. And it was about that time they says, you know, we ought to put on glasses, or maybe it was before that. We got her glasses so that if she walked into something that she didn't realize, it would at least provide it some protection. So they were non-prescription. But I think it was about then they t used their equipment and they figured out what the approximate focus errors might have been in each of the eyes. And so after that, there was a little bit of prescription in her glasses so that that, again, helps clarify what she does have. You can't take her through a normal examination, but she, there, it's good enough that they could figure out, okay, this is about what she needs. And she wears those glasses all the time. Their primary purpose is protection. There's a little bit of visual correction. And then, I don't remember how many years ago, her right eye ultimately has frosted over and it seems to have shrunk a little bit. So it's no longer doing anything. It's all with just the one eye. But with what she's had available, it probably gives her just about as much as she ever had since she never had depth perception. So she's gone through and uh, talking. Her capability to control, learning to control and learn how to say things hasn't worked very well. Um, there were times when uh, in the schools that she'd go to, they'd help her a little bit with sign language. Now, she doesn't do it quite necessarily the automatic way, and we took some of it too. Um, but she'll say some words. She'll do some of them in sign language. The one who understands her the best is my wife. She, she'll go through and she'll understand all kinds of things. And for example, uh, every day she wants to write in her journal what she did, and my wife will ask her questions and then write it down and read it back to her. And that's a big thing to her. Uh, another thing we do is in our home, we always have nice music playing all over the house. And when she doesn't have something else to do, she'll stand like at the kitchen. She'll just kind of dance around in her own little way. And it, it's kind of fun when once in a while she'll hear a song that, like her grandpa used to sing. And she gets all excited. She recognizes that song or a song from uh, choirs that have, she's heard before and she'll relate it back to the person who was the choir director at the time and that type of a thing. So she knows and understands far more than she can necessarily express. It is different. I mean, she has the limitations. She likes things to follow in a certain pattern. She doesn't like a change in schedule and pattern and so forth. Uh, and sometimes, <laughs> you know, I guess like anybody where they've got those limitations, there'll be times she'll get impatient or upset. Um, but actually, generally, she does quite well. We have never, ever regretted keeping her with us. Certainly her life, from what I've seen at times when I've had interactions with those kinds of places, has been far richer staying with us than it ever would have been had 
she'd been relegated to. Besides that, and I'm going to be blunt, Heavenly Father sent her to us. We're not going to slough her off. We're going to hang on to her and do our best that we can with her. And, uh, and hers is probably just about as severe a case as normally you would ever run into. Overall, she had, she didn't have the hydrocephaly, she had the microcephaly, which is unusual, more, the hydrocephaly is apparently more common. But the three basic things is a hydrocephaly, the calcifications in the brain, and the eye damage. Uh, now, I don't know whether the nerve damage is just in the brain or if it may be in some of the other nerves, but one way or another, the signals don't always get, and that's where, like, the tactile helped. The light, blinking lights helped. That gave her something where I couldn't tell you what would have happened had we not had them, but I suspect it probably helped her learn to use what she had a little more effectively and sooner, which helped her in all her other adaptations. Because if she got each thing out of the way, then that's one less thing she has to struggle. 